welcome. Thanks, 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 Thank Mark. you. All right. I would like everyone to stand up to start with. This is a page out of Evan Kaplan's presentation book, just so you know. All right, so everybody's standing. Okay, we're going to start with, for those of you who have been using InfluxDB more than two years, sit down. More than two years. Oh, do you see, now see all the hardcore people sat down. That's good. Early adopters, we like them. All right, for those of you who have started using InfluxDB within the last year, remain standing. And we want the folks that are running more than one instance within the last year to sit down. OK, so the rest of you are relatively new. Welcome to the community. And this talk is definitely for you. All right, so you can all sit down. <laughs> yeah, ten, 10 years or more is like Paul. That's it. All right, so we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit of background. Why are we having this talk? Why has this come up? Monitoring the Enterprise Edition. And then we're going to talk about gathering logs and metrics. Um, and Dylan did an amazing job of talking through uh, Telegraph and how to use that. And so the logging portion is super important. Then we're going to talk about how we're going to visualize, monitor, and do alerting based on the things that we just collected. And we're going to look at a few troubleshooting scenarios. So first of all, from development to production, why are we having this talk? For those of you that are using the open source instance only, when you shift to the enterprise instance, change is required, fundamentally. Why is that? You're going from a single node to nodes with metadata, multiple data nodes. There's more to monitor and manage. One of the most important things you can do is monitor the baselines, establish a baseline, and make sure you're monitoring against it. Why is that? As uh, Dennis will tell you in his next presentation, uh, when you get started with Influx and you're sort of supporting one or more teams, the popularity of the service that you're providing may mean that more metrics come to you. And so the point at which you start using InfluxDB and the point at which you end using InfluxDB, hopefully never, but it, there's, an, there's a trend, right? More servers, more metrics, more devices. And the point at which you start may be at a significantly lower uh, set of CPU, memory, disk resources than where you need to end. And so making sure you understand what that journey looks like for you as you're adding more metrics to the system, super important. Notifications for most common issues. This is all about establishing the telemetry. How do you know the health and availability of the service that you're running and providing to others? And how do you know when it's going off the rails? So similar to what Dylan was talking about just a few minutes ago. So again, as you go from the open source instance, which many of you know and love, single instance database, to something that looks a little bit more like this as the minimum configuration that you would deploy, three meta nodes, two data nodes. Obviously, there's more to look at, manage, and monitor. OK, so let's talk about how you're going to go about doing that. First and foremost, one of the things we're trying to do as a company is share expertise. And so I really was excited to see how many hands went up related to Telegraph and Telegraph usage. And we're going to definitely look at Telegraph configuration. And I'm going to ask some more interactive questions of the audience as we get there. But one of the things we're trying to do, not only with the contributions being made by the community members for the Telegraph plugins, is we're also trying to capture the visualizations and alerting pieces. And why is that? Because we're attempting to share some expertise. We all have different expertise on different kinds of systems in the room. And the more that you can leverage that expertise, all the boats are going to float a little bit higher. I don't think there's anything particularly uh, business differentiating about monitoring a server or monitoring an instance of MySQL or RabbitMQ or whatever it is. But if you happen to be an expert in that and you know the specific metrics that, that are meaningful to you and why you're uh, monitoring them and using them for that early warning system, that telemetry, the more you can share that with other people, the better. Now, here's the deal. We added this new section to the documentation in the last six to eight weeks called the Influx Data Platform. It's an overarching view of how to use and operate the different parts of the tick stack. Rather than taking it, as Paul mentioned, from a component by component perspective, we're trying to provide an overview of how these pieces fit together. And in that, we're delivering an operations guide for enterprise and open source. And so please, if you haven't gone and taken a look at, it, at that, there's a lot of uh, great information in there, including some of the things that you'll see in my presentation and allow you to go a little bit deeper. In addition, uh, you'll see some other code artifacts that I'll bring up in a minute that you can download directly from that uh, site as well. So, gathering metrics and logs. 
one of the things that you'll do when you want to uh, monitor an Influx Enterprise instance is gather all the stats. And what are all the stats? So we've got a minimum uh, recommendation in terms of things like CPU, system, disk, uh, net stats, the response uh, over the HTTP channel, as well as some specific plugins to activate for the database itself. And so that's all on the left. Here's the good news. They're already built. All you got to do is turn them on and configure them. And we're going to walk through a little bit of what that configuration looks like and how easy that is. Now, on the right side of this, uh, I've got some optional settings. Dylan just did a great job of t telling us all about how to use syslog. So for those of you in the room, how many are using syslog to capture logs today? OK, about a quarter. OK, so if there are other uh, log protocols that you'd like us to consider in terms of uh, adding those into Telegraph, uh, please come and meet either with Russ or Daniel or myself after in one of the breaks. We'd love to talk to you about that in more detail. How many are you using Docker? About 50%. And then for those that aren't using Docker, I'm assuming VMware? Hands? OK. And then for those that didn't uh, realize in Telegraph 1.8, we shipped the VMware uh, vSphere plugin. And there's now a corresponding dashboard for that in Chronograph uh, that shipped uh, today as part of Chronograph 1.7. So definitely check that out. So again, from a Telegraph configuration perspective, activate these plugins. Put the, point the Telegraph agent towards the different pieces, and what does that actually look like? Well, before we get to that, where am I going to route these metrics? So if I have a database instance, whether it's open source or enterprise, and I want to gather the stats off of it, and I want to look at its telemetry, where should I send them? Well, the obvious choice is you got, you got options. Option number one is you can stand up another open source instance. And particularly for folks that are deploying multiple instances of enterprise, you can dire direct all those stats back to a single open source instance. You can create dashboards based on template variables in either Grafana or Chronograph, and essentially cycle through the stats of the various uh, systems that you've deployed. This pattern uh, is called MOM to some people, uh, which is the monitor of monitors. I prefer WOW, which is the watcher of the watchers. Uh, whatever you want to call it, the idea is you need something watching the thing that's watching all your things, all right? Now, what if I have other options? What if I only have two instances? I can have them watch each other. I can send the metrics from one into the other. Um, but this is really only uh, limited by your own creativity. So however you want to route the metrics into different locations based on what you have at your disposal and availability, you can. The idea is that you should not ever ever have a production instance of the database monitor itself. Why is that? You're laughing, but you should, you should hear how many support phone calls I get when I'm like, I'm using something called underscore internal. So the database does log its own stats by default into the underscore internal database. And if you're only relying on that to monitor your database, if there's a problem and it goes down for any reason, open source, enterprise, or otherwise, you lose all visibility. You don't know what happened. So best practice is, number one, for production deployments, turn this off in the config. And number two, set up a Telegraph agent with those plugins and grab the stats and put them somewhere you, where you can see them. Pretty simple. Everybody good so far? All right. So let's talk about this. For those of you, all of you Telegraph uh, experts in the room, how many of you are using global tags? Some. OK, so that means a bunch of you have no idea what a global tag is. So let's talk about that for a second. Global tags in Telegraph, super, super interesting feature, and apparently only used by 25% of you. So what can you do with this? In a case where you're trying to monitor multiple InfluxDB instances, you can actually put the name of the instance in a tag. And you can put it as an environment variable and pick those things up. What does this allow you to do? Now I can group by. I can organize all the stats and metrics that get put off by that instance by these different uh, elements that I stick in the global tag. So that could be a cluster ID or a cluster name that you give it. You could give it also an environment parameter. Is it non-prod, prod? prod. Uh, you could put a region tag in there if you wanted to. Anyway, this allows you to harmonize and gather all your metrics by those sets of tags. I'm also providing for you the second element here. These are the default settings that we use uh, when we're managing and monitoring Influx Cloud. And I know there's a gentleman over here who's going to ask me a question. We're monitoring about 300 different instances of uh, Influx Enterprise. And I know you're going to ask me about cardinality, but hold that question until a little bit later. 
But the idea is these are the, these are the configurations we're using, um, and you adjust these based on your desired speed of observability, which means how quickly do you want to um, gather those metrics and then potentially respond uh, to an issue. So we're gathering them roughly at 10-second intervals, and we're grabbing three packets of those things and shoving them across and landing them. Um, over time, we've been downsampling this uh, information and, and providing sort of a longer-term view of these things. But for uh, throughput, uh, the uh, monitoring and alerting systems that we've got in place for our support team, we want to know the second something happens and as quickly as possible so we can take action. OK, second thing on the inputs front, uh, we'll go through and look at the telegraph configuration for this. Essentially, this is the, what we were gathering from a CPU perspective. We're gathering idle and user system and, and what's going on from a steel perspective. Um, and we also want a total CPU count. So we can basically aggregate that information before we send it across to wherever, wherever we're uh, landing it. And then we just activated the memory, net stat system, and DiskIO disk plugins as well. Super simple. On the data node side, again, for enterprise or open source, um, the data node configuration is here. Essentially, point it at the URL for the data node uh, or the load balancer in the case that it's in Flux Enterprise. And we use the debug vars endpoint that's available on the database to grab all the stats. Okay, so this is effectively the part that replaces the underscore internal. Everything that was gathered and captured through the underscore internal that you may be familiar with today is output through the debug vars endpoint and then can be landed in, uh, in, a tar in, in whatever target you're sending it to. And um, the only difference is that the names of the, me uh, the measurement names have InfluxDB uh, prepended to it. Second, um, HTTP uh, response allows you to track the read and write throughput uh, of those uh, individual um, uh, nodes. And on the disk front, disk allows you to ch uh, check how you're doing in terms of throughput. Uh, and specifically, you can look at um, the the sections of the disk, so these are the default values, um, the data landing zone, the wall, which is the right ahead log, and last but not least is the hinted handoff queue, and then we threw root in there as well. Super important to see how the disk is doing overall, but this essentially allows you to gather the size of all of those partitions and then um, set, obviously, thresholds and alerts based on them. Ryan talked a lot about hinted handoff queue. I'm not as sad about it, but uh, <laughs> we do want to keep track of that, and that is a great early warning in case you need to dive into something, um, and we'll show you how you do that in a few minutes. On the meta node front, similar setup. There's a ping endpoint that basically allows us to tell us if the meta node is, is alive or not. We're also looking at the file system, um, particularly around the meta node is uh, capture snapshots of state uh, from time to time, so we want to see how that's going, uh, and we're looking at the uh, underlying disk uh, mount points as well, so the metanode and the root directory. So far, so good? All right. Output side. All right, so of course, uh, I got to send this somewhere. I'm going to send it to an InfluxDB instance. That's the easiest thing to configure. Uh, we send it to the uh, target URL of the database. Again, if it's an open source instance, great, send it to there. Uh, if not, and you're going to use uh, sort of two enterprise instances to monitor each other, just make sure that URL points to the load balancer that you have in front of the, of the cluster. Easy enough. Um, content encoding gzip, definitely recommend turning that on to compress the, uh, the metrics as you're sending them across. All right, and then my favorite topic, and I'm so glad Dylan spent time on this, which is gathering of the log information as well. So the super important thing is the metrics are the early warning system, the logs are the context behind it. All right, so the, me the metadata that you can gather by looking at those uh, early warning signs, the telemetry that you're gathering, then points you to where you need to look in the logs for that contextual information. I'm gonna give you a specific example of that in a few minutes that we've got from Influx Cloud. So first and foremost, we use the syslog input plugin, as Dylan kind of pointed out, and then I'm also sending the output of the logs to a specific uh, database uh, within uh, the monitoring instance, and I'm also, um, I've got a specific retention policy set up for that, and I'm name passing, again, very similar way that Dylan set his up, um, that syslog name uh, as well. I only want to send the syslog data over. Okay, so now what? So 
So I've, I've given you essentially the configuration of the telegraph agents from an input and an output perspective. I've given you the best practices in terms of all the things we want to gather. And then what are you going to do with it? Dashboards, of course. So um, we have pre-built dashboards that you can download. Again, go into the uh, operational documentation. Those are jump start kits. There's some that are pre-packaged already in Chronograph. But of course, not just Chronograph. A lot, a lot of using Grafana. Those exist in Grafana as well. They either exist in the uh, Grafana store, where you can kind of see the various things that have been contributed, um, and we'll have some additional ones uh, based on our best practices as well that you can just download directly. All right? So plug those in. Now, in the uh, very tiny font in the upper left-hand corner, uh, those are the template variables. So if you're using things like the environment name or the cluster ID, you can populate them there, use the exact same dashboard, flip through those, and see, uh, see the stats of all the various things you're monitoring. This is the one on the left the actual dashboard that our support team uses to monitor Influx Cloud. Uh, and I spent very long nights and weekends staring longingly uh, into that dashboard. So common metrics to watch. Disk usage. You would be surprised how many people run out of disk space. <laughs> OK, maybe not. Some people are laughing. This is the most common thing. We can't ingest any more metrics if you run out of disk space. Does that make sense? Is anybody confused on that one? OK. So definitely check how much disk you are using. This particularly becomes a problem if you thought you were operating a steady state instance where you said, hey, like I'm monitoring 60,000 hosts, and I've set my retention policy to 60 days, and I'm pretty sure that the amount of disk space that's going to use is, uh, you know, ends up being in this sort of steady state flat line. But then some other team comes along and says, oh, I know I'm, they're, they're using Influx, and I'm going to deploy 60,000 more servers, and suddenly you're out of disk space. This is a problem. And then you'll call support, and Varesh, our head of support who's in the back, will take your phone call and will lead you through how to A, add more disk space, and B, work through what might be a corrupted shard or some other uh, fun things that happen when you run out of disk. So one of the things you can do Obviously, it's used capacitor. Now, for those of you in the audience, I haven't seen how many hands up for folks using capacitor. OK, see, these are the really hardcore. All right. That was about a third of the audience, which is great. So what we've done here is I've broken up the, the exact batch tasks that we use to uh, monitor and alert uh, for these three uh, troubleshooting scenarios here. And um, the, they're broken up into two sections. The first is the, the task itself, where we're sort of gathering the data. So here the batch task is essentially getting the last use percent from, uh, from the disk, and we're looking at those different paths, and we're going to make sure that um, we gather that every 10 minutes and within a, a five-minute period, and I'm grouping by those things at the bottom. So that gathers the data. And then the second part of the task is where I want to do the evaluation of it. So again, I think Paul had a very similar example of this in Flux. Looks very similar. I'm creating some warning and critical uh, alert thresholds. And then I do an evaluation of the data that I've grabbed back. And if I'm exceeding those thresholds, I'm going to drop the alert into, in, in, in our case, into a Slack channel. Make sense? That's a simple one. Please monitor your disk. That's my recommendation. It's easy to recover if you know what's happening. Uh, and you can prevent that from uh, overrunning. If you want to set those thresholds a little lower, of course, you can as well. It gives you a little bit more time. Um, but that's the, that's the best practice. Second, hinted handoff queue. I think as Ryan sort of uh, uh, spoke to all of us about, the hinted handoff queue is an early warning sign that something is happening. Your data nodes are saturated. There may be uh, the process is down. There could be the network is down. We had, uh, we had one customer call up over the weekend. And he said, uh, yeah, my, uh, my ops team pulled the network out from under the database. I said, well, that seems to be a problem. And he said, well, it's not very resilient. I said, well, it's a distributed system that requires the network to function. So as soon as they put the network back, call me back and let me know how it works. And so everything did recover once the network was put back in place, as you might imagine. But while it was down, uh, no data was ingested, right? And, so, and then as it came back up, um, there was uh, some miscommunication happening between the nodes. Um, and all of the data was landing in one node, and until the network was restored on the second, that, those points were actually buffered. So the idea behind looking at the hinted handoff queue is just to get a sense of what's happening in your, your environment, what, is, what are the nodes actually doing in terms of achieving that eventual consistency by backing these points up. Now in Influx Cloud, um, 
we've left the default setting, which is 10 gigabytes of, of uh, back off storage. So in essence, we will queue up up to 10 gigabytes of data before you start losing points. Now we could make that certainly bigger, we certainly have more disk space at, at our disposal, but 10 gig is sort of a target. I like to call that, how long do you want to sleep? So it depends on how much data you're actually ingesting. So if you're ingesting 10 gigabytes every 90 minutes, you may want to extend that, uh, that uh, buffer. If you're not ingesting that much data, 10 gigabytes is plenty. But you also need to make sure you have enough disk space for the additional 10 gigabytes, and you are monitoring that with the previous script. Make sense? 10 gigabytes per node. Per node. Yes. No, per node. Three nodes yes. So it is 10 gigabytes per node, yes, exactly. So again, similar structure here. We create the batch, uh, gather the information out of the stats that we've gathered, period five minutes every 10 minutes, and then we're going to uh, divide by that number, which essentially gives us a, a, a target in the thousands that's a little easier to deal with. And in our case, I like to sleep, I do. I'm not a morning person. And so I don't want to be told unless the hinted handoff queue reaches 3.5 gigabytes. I don't even want to be like anything below three gig, I don't want to hear about. Because nine times out of 10, it's going to recover on its own and everything will drain back out. Only for the largest customers in Influx Cloud, who again are ingesting you know, multiple gigabytes every 90 minutes, is this a problem. When it gets to half the queue is full, now I want to be paged. Right? So half the queue is now full, please page me. So in this case, we've got this set up, very similar uh, structure. I've got my notification email, and for the warning threshold, I send that to Slack, and when I need to be paged, I use our partner and friends at PagerDuty to actually call us in the middle of the night, and we will dive in and help, okay? Make sense? All right, last one, dead man. Um, dead man script, so I'm not getting metrics. You're not getting it for a wide variety of reasons. So one of the more popular alert types to use, you want to know if the node has disappeared. Some people have a little trouble grokking how to turn this from a maybe streaming task into batch, so I provided a clear example here thanks to one of our engineers who helped me with this. Michael, you know who you are. Appreciate that. Um, in, this in this case, we're counting um, the, the usage system stat that comes off the, uh, off the node. And if we don't see it, then we know we have a problem. Make sense? So it's the, the lack of presence of that stat then is what we want to trigger against. Same thing in this case. I'm looking for a zero over that 10 minute period. And if I don't see it, we know the node has disappeared. So um, for those of you that are running in uh, cloud service provider environments, sometimes nodes just wink out. Or sometimes if you're running OpenStack, they wink out more regularly than others. So, um, <laughs> So if that's your problem, definitely dead man is something to look at to make sure that all the nodes in, in, in your cluster are healthy and available, okay? Three simple examples. Now, for those of you that are using Chronograph, uh, another thing that you can do is you can actually use this uh, InfluxDB out section, and when you fill that in, you can target the alert, um, that the alert has been triggered back into the Chronograph database that exists within uh, your InfluxDB instance, and in this case, I'm populating with all the dead man information. And so when you log into Chronograph, there's a stats page that shows at the beginning with this sort of hist uh, histogram count at the top. And then along the left, there's the uh, alert summaries that are here. And in this case, we are showing all the dead mans in that, in that location. So that little snippet of code, if you add that to your tick script, will allow you to populate that, that section. And that's in the documentation, but it's a little hint. All right, let's talk about troubleshooting. So common troubleshooting scenarios. We all know about the oom um killer now, don't we? I just thought, I didn't know what happened, it just died, right? So one of the, so one of the things that you can see, um, if you're doing the gathering of early warning stats, in this case, I'm gathering the memory usage statistics, and here I can see that there's three nodes, those are probably the meta nodes, that are pretty much flatlined. Nothing's really going on with them, they're using a certain amount of memory, but those top two lines are doing something pretty funky. So the top uh, sort of light blue line uh, peaked up and then started to stabilize back down, where the darker blue line now is going through what we uh, lovingly call and support the OOM loop. So in this case, uh, the amount of memory that that node needs to do whatever job it's being asked to do at, the, at the, this time, it's being exceeded. 
So again, those of you who are on um, cloud service provider infrastructures, uh, whether it's Google or AWS, uh, Azure, et cetera, the uh, recovery point for this is that you can resize um, the sides of your data nodes uh, and then bring them back online and give them some more memory. Allow it to try to process that while you then go into the log information that you've derived from the metadata uh, to look at what's the actual cause. And by the way, the UMLU can be caused for a wide variety of reasons. Um, InfluxDB loves memory. Even if you've turned on the new spill to disk index, we like memory. And so again, one of the things to look at is what is the root cause of that? Most likely that's going to be in the log and now you know exactly which data node to look at because it's the one here that's kind of going up and down through your own loop. Second, runaway series cardinality. This is another popular one that we see. So what does this actually mean? So here's a, wait, this is your favorite question, right? How much series cardinality can it handle? Well, here's a customer that's gone from six million to eight million series over the course of four or five days. Now that's over four or five days, not, not really a problem. Well, what happened if this was in uh, four or five hours? That's what we normally see. A four to five hour increase of two million in series cardinality in that rapid means you've probably deployed something wrong. You may have put a new tag into a telegraph input plugin that you didn't mean to put there that's driving your series cardinality. So this is another one of the thresholds that you can look at and say, what has actually changed? And what's my expectation in terms of the data that I'm ingesting into the system and how can I, and how can I go and track that down? And Ryan mentioned there's some additional tools that allow you to do inspection to figure out uh, where this is coming from. But having this early warning sign of what's normal for you versus not is super critical. Make sense? Okay. So by gathering all your metrics and stats, the idea is understand what type of workload you're running against in Flux. Number one, are you read heavy, write heavy, or mixed workload? Bunch of the customers in Flux Cloud are on the, uh, what I would call, write heavy workload. They're ingesting tons and tons of metrics, but the number of dashboards that they run and the number of queries they run against that, relatively low. We've got a couple customers in the audience that I talked to today, they're actually the opposite. Their, their um, ingest rate is relatively modest, but they have 10, 15, 20 dashboards times you know, 100 users trying to access that information all at once. So high value, high visibility data, so they're way higher on the query side than they are on the right side. Or you're maybe your mixed workload. The, the amount of uh, data that you're ingesting and the number of queries are sort of in a, in a closer uh, you know, ratio to each other. So the idea here is make sure you establish some baseline so you understand what normal looks like for you. Whether it's the ingest rate, the query rate, then you can actually see what's happening uh, from a usage perspective and particularly over time. One of the things that's super valuable to us, again, running and managing more than 300 clusters, is I can do a comparative analysis. When I see something, I can say, how does this compare to another customer or another uh, deployment that we've seen based on either ingest rates or volumes or queries, the memory utilization, all of the stats that we're typically uh, gathering and, and collecting, right? The comparative analysis is super powerful because again, you could write a, a, a very long query and, or you could have a thousand short queries. How that affects the system may be very, very different. And so you wanna basically be able to do, make those comparisons even amongst your own uh, instances that you have deployed. Second, here's another really fun thing that happens. Understand the capabilities of your hardware from an IOPS and disk throughput perspective. Again, those of you that are deploying in cloud service provider environments may or may not be aware of how the instance size that you're deploying on is affected or affects the amount of disk throughput that you're allocated. Yeah, I see some people nodding their heads. You, better, you ran into this before, didn't you? Yeah. So what the expectation of the cloud service providers is typically is that the larger nodes are gonna have to handle more data, so they then also allocate you more IOPS and th therefore disk throughput as part of the deployment setup. But if you don't know that, and you're like, why is this node not capable of ingesting more data? And you may be tapped out on this front. And you can also partition this by both reads and writes. Okay, so you can actually look at what is the thing that's actually driving the, driving the problem in terms of the throughput. Is it my write load, my read load, or a, 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 a sum total of both? And then last but not least, metrics first, right? Make sure you gather this data. It highlights where you're going to need to look in your log files. Um, allows you to establish those baselines. You can create alerts off of it. I've given you three examples. There's tons more that you could put in place based on your experience, based on how long you want to sleep, 
based on automation that you want to put in place to recover some of these things, um, but gather those metrics. A couple of things for uh, you know, root cause observation, um, things like hinted handoff queue blocked. That, that's a log message. There's no way that I'm going to see that in a metric except for then looking back at my IOPS and disk throughput. If my IOPS and disk throughput flatten out, that means you're tapped out. And if you have a node outage while you're in that tapped out state, you're not going to be able to push any more uh, volume through to the hinted handoff queue. So if you see a message like that in the log, now that's a hint. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I should go back and look at my, my disk throughput and see where that, that's trending or see if that's been trending in a flat line. Okay, so to recap, gather your metrics and logs. Great job, Dylan, highlighting the use of influx for gathering log data. If you're not using syslog, come meet with me, Russ, Daniel, and uh, anybody else from the influx team about what you are using from a log protocol perspective. We'd love to hear more about that and what we could do to help. Use the dashboards, either the Grafana ones or ones we've built, to visualize those, those metrics. You don't have to build them yourself. Take them as a starting point flesh them out. If you have questions, definitely use the community site to ask. We'd be happy to help you. All of those internal stats now have been documented in terms of what they mean and what their values are in that platform documentation, all of them, including the latest ones that have been added for the 1.7 release that dropped today. And last but not least, review those common troubleshooting scenarios, put your tick scripts in place, and let us know what we can do to help. All right, with that, you have a question about cardinality, don't you? <laughs> okay, you're gonna ask another question. All right, good. Questions? Uh, when will 1.7 be available in uh, Influx, Influx Cloud? Influx Cloud, great question. So let me talk a little bit about our standard process for releasing software. How many of you like deploying a .0 release into production? I heard laughs, that, that's exactly the right response. I don't even like releasing a .0 release of product, except that I do want to put it in the hands of the community to beat on it, play with it, but in non-prod environments. So our standard process, what we do between Ryan, myself, and Varesh, is when we, when we burn the .0 release of whatever version we've got, we take that into Influx Cloud first. So we got the Enterprise Edition, it's a .0 release, I could ship it out to you right now, but what we do is we set up what we call a shadow clone. And what we do is we re replicate the traffic such that now we can test operationally the health, stability, and availability of the new bits. We don't look at any of the data. We don't look at any of the outputs. All we look at is metrics first. And the log data that comes off of that correlate those two things together. And we do a comparative analysis. How is the new instance running compared to the old instance? Do we see any significant perturbations in terms of memory usage? Is there a memory leak? Do we have other issues? So that's the starting point for us. And this, is, this does not affect anybody's production workload. And the commitment that we have to you is I want to release the highest quality software I can using the widest variety of test cases that exist on the planet, which you're already providing through usage. So our standard operating procedure is to take those releases, test them in cloud, find defects, fix them before we ever ship the enterprise release, either to the cloud customers or to our enterprise customers. Does that make sense? So we're going to start that process next week. We were a little busy this week with some things. And uh, so next week, we'll start looking at taking those bits through the cloud environment, testing them out, trying to detect those issues. And uh, I would say look for uh, that to roll out towards the end of the month, um, latest sort of first week of December, I think, is the current course and speed. All right? Awesome. Other questions? Yes. Ah, oh, yes. All right. Maxim, so <laughs> lay it on me. Yeah. So if Influx is out of memory, Mm -hmm. Any way you could recover it without bumping up the memory? Sure. So the first thing to do if, um, if your influx runs out of memory is are you using the in-mem index or TSI? One quick, way to one quick way to recover if you're only on in-mem is go and start converting your index to the, to, to the TSI. And if you're on TSI? If you're on there, you're going to need a bigger node um, or potentially you might want to scale horizontally if you're using the enterprise edition. Add more nodes. Uh, some another case like removing some data or what 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 would help I, if you really cannot increase the memory? Yeah. What would you do? That could be a problem. 
So well, let's talk to Ryan after, the, after this, and we'll, uh, we'll go into some more detail on that one. That's one of the reasons why you want to really keep an eye on and get that early warning on the telemetry and the metrics. What else? You have a hand up, or is that just you're stretching because you're, you're yoga? All right. Okay, all right. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much, everybody.